G'day, I'm Dr Harry Cooper. Welcome to Harry's Practice Baby Animal Special. And say hello to Dolly. She's a Tasmanian devil. Mind you, she is a very quiet one. But guess what? She's got four babies in her pouch. Now, being a baby Tassie devil is very dangerous. You see, she's pregnant only for three weeks. And the babies are born as tiny little pink things about half the size of a matchhead. They crawl up into the pouch and four are lucky enough to find one tit each and attach. Mind you, up to 30 can be born and the others just fall by the way. Sorry. Doll, are you ready to go and get on with looking after your babies? All right, I've got a busy day. Better get on with it. Tonight on an all new one hour Harry's practice, baby animals galore, including a little beton with a broken leg. Oh, we've got a good response too. Denny Hines is concerned. Her cute little puppy, Rizla, is looking a bit the worse for wear. I hope there's no handsome male dogs out there. <laughs> Don't look right now, please. They call wombats the bulldozers of the bush, but not when they're this young. And just like a premature baby, she needs round-the-clock attention and plenty of TLC. It's bottle time for you. There you go. And sometimes diagnosing bird problems can get a bit tacky. I want you to smell this. <laughs> But my first baby animal house call is to Michelle and her ever-increasing flock of budgies. You've got a few budgie problems, have you? We have. We have. They don't Little ones. They don't stop brooding. No, I know. In fact, Super Mum here has laid a massive 49 eggs in just nine months. So what have you got, two little babies in there? Yep. And you've got... Two weeks to go. And you'll hear Mum cry, I reckon. OK. Now yeah, we'll hear Mum cry. Yeah, she hates it when we touch the babies or the eggs. These little chicks are hatchlings number 32 and 33 in an ever-growing family. My guess is that this one would probably be somewhere about oh, six to eight days old and that one would be two days older. Budgies normally lay around 16 eggs a year, but if Super Mum keeps going, her average will be 65. How many eggs did she lay this time round? Oh, this time nine. Nine? Mm. What did you do with them? I threw five of them over the fence. I hate doing it. Why? Oh, because I think, oh, they're little babies and they're her babies. And, and then the days that I do take the eggs away, she cries. She makes a funny, screeching mother's baby noise. It's Stop hard. it! <laughs> she does not. It's true. It's a resentment noise. It's a get out, I don't want you here noise. Yep. It's a threat. Mm -hmm. Get out of my nest. Now, I'm not really surprised these budgies keep breeding. In the wild, they live in semi-desert, but here, everything's laid on. We've got apple, we've got bread, we've got some natural branches here, and guess what else we've got? A nest box. Which, by the looks of things, has been getting quite a workout. All the birds in this aviary, bar four, are hers. And the pied and the grey would be at least two of those, right? Yeah. OK. Most of Super Mum's babies are green like her. Green is a dominant colour but she carries other colours too. That's what's great about breeding budgies. You never quite know what's going to pop out. But if Michelle really wants to stop her budgies from breeding, there is a simple solution. Take the nest box away. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to do. Okay. If you're worried about eggs, take them away as they're laid. It won't hurt Super Mum, and eventually she'll get the hint and stop laying. And by then those other chicks will be out of the nest and you could take the nest box away. Okay. And then put it with the family? Yeah. Two clutches per year is enough. All right. And if she can raise three or four chicks in each clutch, mm -hmm. I'm happy. So Super Mum's going to get a well-earned rest. And Dad, well, he gets the grey hen as a new girlfriend. I would wait at least three or four weeks before you introduce the grey hen with the blue male. Okay. Simply because... He may get aggressive towards her mm. if you just swap them one for one. Right. Doesn't always work that way. The last thing Michelle needs to do is sell off some of those chicks and replace them with new birds. You have fresh blood, no inbreeding, and you can expand your colony. Yep. Good cup of tea. I'd like you to meet a great Australian bush baby. Her name is Itty Bitty. She's a common wombat and is only five months old. This little girl lost her mum and has been hand reared by staff here at Featherdale Wildlife Park. And just like a premature baby, she needs round the clock attention and plenty of TLC. It's bottle time for you. There you go. Itty Bitty gets her bottle four times a day. But it's not just ordinary cow's milk. You see, marsupials need a low lactose formula 
and this one made by Wombaroo Food Products is specially designed to replace Mother Wombat's milk. After a big drink, Itty Bitty needs a nap and she's comfy as can be in the sleeve of this old jumper. Baby Wombats sometimes sleep 22 hours a day, but when Itty's awake, she loves to go exploring. In the wild, adult wombats eat grasses, shrubs and roots, and they can spend up to eight hours a night grazing. Young wombats take the lead from their mothers, and they teach them how to eat grass. But in Itty Bitty's case, it's the carers that must teach her, and they get down on wombat level and show her how to do it. Here you go. You'll get the hang of it, I promise. By the time they're 10 months old, young wombats have left the pouch for good, but they'll hang around the mum's heels until they start their own families. <laughs> Some people call wombats the bulldozers of the bush, and it's no wonder. Home to a wombat is a 30 metre burrow, and obstacles like tree roots and fence palings won't stop their progress. Wombats will dig and chew through just about anything. You see, Wombat's teeth grow constantly, so they have to keep on chewing to keep them trimmed. So, in a few months, Itty Bitty's going to need somewhere to dig and something tough to chew on, like hard vegetables or a branch covered in bark. Wombats are solitary creatures and can live in captivity up to 27 years, so this one can look forward to a long and healthy life. Now, she might be itty bitty now, weighing in at only two kilos, but by the time she's two years of age, she could weigh up to 40 kilos, like Buddy here. Wombats are one of the world's biggest burrowing animals. They can run up to 40 kilometres an hour over short distances and spend up to two thirds of their life underground. Coming up, does the thought of bringing home a puppy or kitten put you off? Don't worry, Katrina has everything you'll need to know to help things go smoothly. There are some ways to make it easier for everyone, from feeding time to toilet training. This week's Secret Life of Pets is not exactly about a baby animal, it's about a baby and his cat. The baby's name is Oliver and the cat is a Burmese called Max. The problem is that Max has become obsessed with Oliver's dummy. In fact, he'll retrieve it from almost anywhere. Pet cam's set up, so let's see. First of all, Oliver's mum, Philippa, puts the dummy on the windowsill and here comes Max. Next, it's on the dining room table and Max swoops just like a thief in the night. Now, here's a challenge. On top of the kitchen cupboards. No problem for Max. He taps it to the floor first and bingo, it's gone. And so is he. Back at the surgery, wildlife carers John and Wendy have brought in a couple of gorgeous Aussie natives. The little wombat's just along for the ride but Betty, the four-month-old orphan Betong, has a problem. Somehow, she, she's hurt this little foot here on the left. Let's have a squeeze. And uh, what... It, there was a lot of swelling, um, and then that went down, didn't it? Show me exactly where it was swollen. It was swollen on that joint there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just on that joint, and she turns it out and she puts it over like that. Yes. And it's very... And now we're well, finding that she's losing her balance a little bit. Yeah, she's flopping oh. over. And... An injury like this can be really serious for small marsupials like Betty. That's because betongs rely on their strong back legs to hop away quickly from predators. Now I'm going to get you to step up here and hold onto her. Yep, sure. So that Just I, so the feet are there. off the ground. Yep, mm. so the feet are off the ground. Okay. I need to work out if the problem is caused by damage to the tendons or the nerves. And the best way to do that is to use the squeeze test. We're going to start with a normal toe because every animal's got a different Pain level, right? Yes. So we just give this bit of a squeeze, see what happens. Oh, mm -hmm. and that wasn't much of a squeeze. Okay, no, we pulled it away straight away. She's reacted. To yeah, that, hasn't exactly. Yeah, that's now, good. Let's see what we get down here. So that's Oh, we got a good response too. Very good. Okay. Very good. So, yeah, that's good. I'm that's, happy. That's good. Yeah. What that means is the nerve supply in the area are not damaged, so it's damaged tendons and ligaments causing the problem. Fortunately, these can repair as long as the leg is kept straight. If that doesn't repair, she's going to have trouble in, in the wild, isn't she? If that doesn't repair, she's not a release job. Mm. Okay? And we want it. She's not a release job. So we've got to make every effort 
to get her to the stage where we can release her into the wild. It would be difficult to put Betty's leg in plaster, but a splint made from an ordinary paddle pop stick and a strip of door sealer will substitute nicely. The tape will hold it securely in place. That'll leave that little scratchy toe. Yeah, it should that's the grooming, the grooming toe on the grooming inside. Grooming toe on the inside. Yeah. And that should keep the joint stable enough to heal. There you go, Princess. That's good. She's giving it a good sniff to check it out, and that's quite normal. She'll get used to it. Oh, yeah, that's good. It's keeping it straight. Yes. I think it is achieving its object. All right, young lady. Your mum and dad are going to look after you now. I want you to change it every two days. In a few weeks' time, a callus should start to form over the joint, which will mean Betty will be on her way to recovery. We'll check up on her progress later in the show. Bringing home a puppy is a big step, and it's one that's exciting for everyone. You're becoming a puppy parent, and puppy gets to meet a brand new family in a brand new home. So here are some ways to make it easier for everyone, from feeding time to toilet training. The first thing to realise is looking after your pup begins well before you bring him home. Before you even think about going shopping for puppy essentials, you've got to puppy-proof your house. Get down to puppy level and have a good sniff around for things that they might like to chew. Tape over electrical cords and be sure to tie up curtains and other things that dangle. They're way too tempting for little puppies. Just about everything in this cupboard can make your puppy sick. So it's best to move these products out of reach. And that also includes breakables. If you want to keep puppy out of certain parts of the house altogether, try a baby gate. You can get one from the larger retailers like Target or Kmart. And while you're at it, check the backyard, because pups will chew up your garden and some plants can be dangerous. This is oleander and it can kill your pup. Bulbs like daffodils and hyacinths can make puppies really sick. Next, check your fences and gates. You'll need to block up any holes that a puppy could squeeze through. And now about that shopping. You'll need a bed, a collar lead and ID tag, a brush and shampoo, a bunch of toys for puppy to play with. Avoid plastic food and water bowls. Get something like this, terracotta or stainless steel. Puppies can't chew on them or knock them over. Okay, time to pick up your pup. And here's a terrific tip. Go first thing Saturday morning so you can spend the whole weekend getting to know each other. One of the most important things to teach your pup is toilet training. And first up, you need to show him where you want him to go. Now, this is going to require some patience. Basically, you wait with your pup until he goes and then shower him with praise when he does. And that way, your puppy will start to learn that outside is the place to do his business. Oh, you good puppy. He's a good boy. And here's some more toilet training tips. Take your pup outside to the same spot when he wakes up and after meals. Wee wee's little one. Wee wee's. And with any luck you should avoid those little mishaps. Always find out what your pup has been eating. Because if you want to change it you need to do so gradually because sudden changes in diet can cause tummy upsets. Now you do this by mixing a small amount of the new food in with the old and the next day a little bit more and a little bit more after that and before you know it your puppy won't notice the difference. Come on gorgeous. So you've got through the first day. Well done. <laughs> now only you can decide whether your pup's going to grow up sleeping inside or outside. But his first night in his new home can be tough for everyone. Puppies are used to cuddling up to their mum and the rest of their family. So a hot water bottle wrapped in a towel and a nice snugly soft toy will help them to feel cosy and secure. And a good old fashioned ticking clock to simulate mum's heartbeat is a great idea as well. Here you go little one. Wow. There's still a good chance your pup's going to whine. It sounds hard but resist the urge to go to him because that just rewards him. As long as you know he's okay, your pup should be sleeping soundly within a week. Now's the perfect time to start obedience training and puppy preschool. And don't forget to talk to your vet for advice on worming and vaccinations. After the break, the perennial problem. Lucinda is a digging dog. Caught in the act, Lucinda. The perils of introducing a young kitten to an old cat. If you try and touch her at all, yeah, you basically get sliced and diced. And meet Tony, 
He's Steve Austin's newest puppy pupil. As soon as he lifts that paw, that's immediately is the time that you say good and reward him. Good dog. Off you go, mate. Good boy. That's buddy waving. Now, even at 10 weeks, you can train your puppy at home to do exactly the same thing. This is my new little puppy, Tony. He's a Jack Russell. First of all, get the reward in your hand and put it under his nose. Good. The behaviour that we wanted is as soon as he lifts his little foot. Let's do it again. Hold the reward in your hand. Tempt the little puppy. Tony. Good. And as soon as he lifts that paw, that's immediately is the time that you say good and reward him. He's thinking to himself, how do I get that little bit of meat? He's thinking, he's thinking. Hold the reward just so he can't get it. Good. <laughs> and then I'm going to reward him. And now we're on our way to getting Tony to wave goodbye to. My next baby animal house call is to Lisa and her two female vermin cats. Now, Nutmeg's the senior partner at eight, while young Storm is just a kitten at six months. Hello, Lisa. How are Good you? Good morning. Thank Help to the rescue. A... Thank you. <laughs> but you've got a beautiful backyard. Thank you. Lovely and sunny. It's gorgeous. Works well for me. What a great idea. It's a cat enclosure, something I'd like to see in every cat owner's backyard. They keep your cat off the road and out of trouble. But yep. you've got troubles, haven't you? Oh, definitely. This little one down here. Now, Nutmeg was a normal happy cat until Lisa and her husband separated. She started really fretting and pining. She was sitting at the end of the bed crying at me all night long. Um, I thought I'd help the situation and get her a kitten. Not a good move. Nutmeg took an instant dislike to storm the kitten. And while Lisa did everything right by gradually introducing the two, Nutmeg now tries to attack Storm every chance she gets. What's the kitten do? Generally, the kitten will go through the door and hide under the chair. There'll be fur lost mm -hmm. and there'll be a lot of um, growling and squealing sort of noises. But Storm isn't the only one to suffer the wrath of Nutmeg. If another cat enters the yard, Nutmeg really gets ticked off. You know, the Taz Devil cartoon character? That's what she does. And um, she just, you know, you get the full noise, the, the growling. If you try and touch her at all, yeah, you basically get sliced and diced. And the cause of this aggression can be traced back to when Nutmeg was a kitten. How old was Nutmeg when you got her? We got her two months. OK. Mm. That's young to get a kitten two months. Mm -hmm. Normally most breeders don't sell them much under 12 weeks. So Nutmeg never got to learn how to behave around other cats. Fighting is it her only antisocial behaviour. She likes spraying. Ah. Since Storm's arrival, Nutmeg's spraying got so bad, Lisa had to cover her sofa with plastic. You could almost say Nutmeg's gone a bit wild. Did you take that picture? Yes, I did. It's a leopard, which Lisa saw on a recent trip to Africa. In the wild, mm -hmm. what would that leopard do to say to other leopards, stay away, this is my joint? I've seen them in the wild do it, so yes, they spray on trees and things to mark their territory. And Nutmeg doesn't want to share her territory with Storm. So how do we solve the problem? Well, the most important thing is that young Storm has an escape route because soon she'll be too big to fit under that chair. Now, this door can be wedged at a certain opening. By putting wedges on either side of the door, we can make sure that Storm fits through and Nutmeg doesn't. That fixes the fighting, but what about the spraying? We're going to use a product in the area where the cat would normally come and spray called Feliway, okay. which will produce, or which will rather, the product will leave behind a natural hormone, uh, which the cat will be unwilling to spray around. Finally, I'm going to put Nutmeg on some anti-anxiety medication for the next few months. It'll help calm her down. You love your cats. I do. Keep loving your cats. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Thank you very much. And a nice cup of tea as well. <laughs> All right. Meet Lucinda. She's a 16-week-old Spoodle. That's right, Spoodle. A cross between a Cocker Spaniel and a Poodle. Now, every morning, Lucinda and her owner, Megan, head down to the local beach so Lucinda can play her favourite game, chasing the bird. But 
Despite all the exercise and fresh air, this puppy still has a problem, and it has something to do with loneliness. G'day, Megan. Hey, Dr. Chris, how are you? Not too bad, how are you? Good, thank you. I'm guessing that is our Lucinda. That's definitely Lucinda. Now, that's a pretty big bark for a puppy, and it's driving Megan mad. I bet the neighbours really love you for it, too. Oh, they're not happy with me at all. Let's go and sort out the problem. OK. All right, Lucinda, it's OK now. You've got the company of the one you love. She's a great-looking dog. Absolutely, she's gorgeous. But as soon as Megan leaves Lucinda home alone, she turns into a real little Lucifer. Barking, crying, the whole whining. Now, Megan's flatmate works from home, so Lucinda hasn't got used to being left by herself. It's just at night when we go to the gym or go out to a movie or even want to go out for dinner or a night out. They're the hardest times because obviously, you know, that's sort of four or five hours that she's by herself. Sure. Lucinda has developed a real dependence on Megan. She follows her around the house like a shadow. And every second away from you probably aches. Aches in the heart. Definitely. I think if she could sing Barry White's I Can't Get Enough of Your Love, baby, she would. <laughs> but barking isn't Lucinda's only bad habit. She's also started digging in the backyard. And what do we have here? Caught in the act, Lucinda. What are you up to, huh? Digging is a common sign of stress and boredom in dogs. But why do they dig? Well, one of the few places where dogs have sweat glands is on the pads of their toes. So when they dig, they're actually marking their territory, which helps them feel more safe and secure. Now, you've got to remember that dogs are instinctively members of a pack. So out in the wild, they rely on having a group of other animals there for security, for food and for fun as well. And when Megan and her flatmate leave Lucinda home alone, she feels like her pack has deserted her. So what we have to do is give Lucinda a place where she feels secure. Now this is where Lucinda's stress-free existence begins. We need to create a bit of an environment where she can run to where things don't seem so bad. We're going to make a den for Lucinda, filled with toys and treats that'll keep her mind off Megan. Something that you can also try that would be very handy is getting one of your old jumpers to put in her den there. You see, if she can't have you in person, at least then she can have a little part of you, i.e. your scent, and that's going to make her more relaxed when you're away. Next, we need to decrease the dependence Lucinda has on Megan by increasing the time they spend apart. And the way we do that is by initially giving her 10 seconds in here before you come and see her, and then 30 seconds, and then a minute. And Megan should only come back to Lucinda when she's calmed down and not barking. Finally, we need to change those telltale signals that remind Lucinda that Megan is about to leave home. So what you can do is pick up the car keys, get dressed in front of the mirror, slam the door at different times during the day, but don't actually go anywhere. Lucinda's still a young pup, so she'll be quick to learn. And once her anxiety disappears, it'll be the end of the barking and backyard excavation. Great, thanks very much for your help. No worries, problem solved. Brilliant. Next, surfing superstar Joel Parkinson and his problem puppy, Trey. And an amazing baby hippo that's found a new use for crocodiles. The young crocodile in this picture wants nothing more in life than a good meal, a bit of sunshine and some water to swim in. But Pabadak the baby hippo has other ideas. He's been looking for an easy way to clean his teeth and now he thinks he's found it. You see a crocodile's tail has a long row of bony ridges all the way along it. Pabadak reckons they would do the job perfectly. So here he goes. Yes. It works, all the way down to the gums. The feeling of finally having clean teeth is absolutely fantastic. Now all Padavac has to do is find a good mouthwash. What an amazing animal. Queenslander Joel Parkinson is riding high on international surfing success. He's in the top 16 in the world and is the envy of every young grommet. That's so wicked. Joel and his girlfriend Monica have just moved into their new pad, a barley themed home overlooking his local beach. And to go with the new house, a brand new boxer puppy named Trey, who for them was the pick of the litter. When we walked in, I had uh, these white sneakers on and the dogs went going crazy over them and he was kind of just, kind of stumbled out last minute out of the kennel like, oh, it's all this commotion, rah, rah, and come out and then he was just mellow and 
real placid and that I was just like, oh, let's get him. And then we picked him up and he was just like floppy and, and cruisy asleep. and fell asleep and then that was <laughs> it. It was like, this is it. Trey may be calm, but he still gets up to plenty of puppy mischief. You know, you take your shoes off the front door and when you go to leave, you know, they're in his bed. So that's pretty much what, you know, he'll find them, drag them through, rip them up a bit. Yeah, just anything he can really pick up from the floor he wants to chew on, takes back to his bed. Unfortunately for Joel and Monica, that's normal puppy behaviour and he should grow out of it by about 12 months of age. The real problem is his collar. I bought his collar when we first got him and we put it on like a couple of days afterwards and he was sort of put it on and he just goes crazy with it, like runs into things and tries to rub it off and can't walk properly and yeah. A collar is something all dogs need to get used to and the trick is to make wearing it a pleasurable experience. Hey Trey, hey, what a beautiful view. Hello yes. little one. Great spot for a lesson, okay you, we're going to put your collar on. Thank you, <laughs> come on. All right, I'm armed with treats. What we're going to do, let him know if you've got a treat. Yep, put it on. Good puppy. Stay. Good puppy. See how the treat's much yep. more exciting? So much more exciting. Good boy. You, you go, didn't boy. even notice that. Give Good him a pat. Boy. Good boy. And then instead of leaving it till he gets really annoyed with it, you just take it off. Great. Yay. Yay. Good, Good boy. boy. <laughs> All right, you guys have a go. Now. <laughs> Collar. Treats. Your arm. Sit. Sit down. Sit. Sit. So Joel keeps giving Trey treats as Monica sneakily oh. slips on the collar. Good boy. Now is that the lead you're using? Or yeah, you want it to use? is. It's probably a little bit heavy to start off with a palm, but you can use this definitely when he's an adult. What I'd do is I'd get one that's about that long and thin, like for a small dog. We had a fight over that. We had a fight over that. Now I'm looking in Joel's garage for an old surfing leg rope. They're strong, but still light. All I have to do is cut it to size. The trick to getting Trey used to it is to put the lead on during meal times because he's way too distracted by food to notice it. Go, go, go. Now, look at these two together. Oh. Well, you know what they say about a man's best friend? For Joel, <laughs> it has to be Trey. Still to come, Denny Hines gets down in the surgery with her new puppy, Rizla. Because dogs aren't allowed to nightclubs, we, yeah. bring, we bring the nightclubs to the dogs. <laughs> OK, I'll do the music. Ready? Go. Hi, I'm Susie and this is Michael and this is Obi. And Obi is Michael's favourite pet because he's big and fluffy and he shares his food and he lets him give him big pats. Like that. We've already looked at bringing puppy home. Well, now it's Kitty's turn and you need to be just as prepared. There's shopping to do and kitten proofing for starters, plus a whole heap more before you bring home that little ball of fluff. First, the kitten supplies. Carry cage, bed, bowls, a brush and toys, collar and ID tag, and don't forget a litter tray and scratching post. When choosing a collar for your kitten, go for something like this with elastic on it. That way if it should get caught on anything, puss can easily slip her head out. Next on the list, kitten proofing. Just like puppies, kittens can't resist electrical leads and cords, so roll them up, hide them or tape them down. And if you don't want puss getting stuck underneath the furniture or behind the fridge, use double-sided tape. Cats hate touching anything sticky. Now it's time to introduce your kitten to her new home and here's how you do it. First off, choose a small quiet room like a bedroom or laundry. Put in all the things that your kitten will need, including a litter tray. Then open the carry cage door and let puss come out in her own time. She might need a little encouragement. When it comes to diet, go with a good quality kitten food and plenty of fresh water. And don't give your kitten cow's milk as it can cause tummy upsets. If you want to give puss a treat, pick up a low lactose pet milk from your supermarket. Cats are for 
fastidiously clean and usually take to litter training very easily, but you should still give them a helping hand. So straight after they wake up or after they've had a meal, take them to the tray and show them how it's done. And when she does go, make sure you tell her what a good girl she is. Good girl. Puss will need vaccinations at 12 and 16 weeks against life-threatening feline diseases. And you'll need to worm her too. Worming treatment comes in a paste so you can easily put it into kittens' food. Now here's something you'll both enjoy. At least once a day, pick up your kitten, feel her little paws, her tail, and gently touch her all over. Once she's relaxed with this, you can comb through her coat with your fingers and then move on to a little baby brush. This is great because it helps get her used to being brushed and prepares her for being handled by the vet. Is that nice little one? Give your kitten a month to explore the inside of your home and then it's decision time. Is she going to be an indoor cat or an outdoor one? Well, I strongly recommend that all cats are kept inside. It protects them from injury or illness and it keeps our wildlife safe as well. And you know what? A kitten won't miss what she's never experienced. Will you, little one? Hey? Practicing in the city gives me the chance to meet all sorts of interesting people. In fact, one of my regular clients is singer Denny Hines. And Denny and her flatmate Fiona have a new little puppy called Rizla. So, girls, what's the problem there? She's got an eye issue. Um, it doesn't doesn't um, drain very well and um, well it yeah. seems to be over she's Bit very teary all the time yuckiness now staining around the eyes is very common in young dogs could be two things um, either the hair that's around her face there mm. and around her eyes is coming in contact with her eyeball and causing some irritation the other thing is that she may have a blocked tear duct the tear duct acts like a drain carrying the tears away from the eye to the nose now to find out whether those tear ducts are blocked what we're going to do is put some fluorescent dye in, that, in those eyes there. Mm -hmm. And if Rizzler's tear ducts are working, the dye will come out the end of her nose. If I hope there's no handsome male dogs out there. <laughs> Don't look right now, please. The dye I've put in Rizzler's eye is much easier to see under UV light. Now, because dogs aren't allowed to nightclubs, we, yeah. bring, we bring the nightclub to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll do the music. Ready? Go. <laughs> so I've got a fluorescent <laughs> black light there. <laughs> and... You can see. Ooh. Oh, look. It, it's oh. fluorescing bright green yeah. in the areas there. If we go to the nostril. Is there anything there? No, there's not. Oh, oh, so baby. that's not working. Those tear ducts are blocked. And that means they'll need to be flushed out while Rizzler's under anaesthetic. So I'm going to wait to do it when I desex her in two months' time. Till then, Denny and Fiona need to help keep Rizzler's eyes clean. And the way we do that is we make up a little pad using some tissues. <clears throat> so fold it into a little square, wet it with some salty water, mm -hmm. and then just wipe from the corner down the yeah. face. Okay, just yeah. to clear that. Okay. Just to clear that away. If Fiona and Denny do this a couple of times a day, it'll help reduce the risk of eye infections. But Rizzler's eyes aren't her only problem. Yeah, she likes to hump arms, not legs. And I don't know what that's about because I thought only dogs with willies did that. Mm-hmm. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> you see, humping is one of the ways a dog will try and assert its dominance. First thing I want you to do is when she starts humping arms, mm -hmm. I want you to immediately, within one or two seconds, any longer, and she won't associate it, I want you to jump in there and say, Rizzler, stop, very okay. loud. Pick her up and put her away from your world. Mm -hmm. And Danny and Fiona need to make sure that they're the dominant ones in the household. No food from the table? No. Oh, no, she doesn't do that. No, no. we don't do that. And yep. we feed her first yep. and then feed us. We're meant to do it the other way around. You just said something very interesting. Mm, Feeding in the pack. If you, She doesn't look like much like a, a wild dog. No. But in, in a wild dog situation, the most superior animals... So we animals, should feed first. The most superior animals eat first. They eat the best food and the, the dogs at the bottom of the order okay. get the scraps. Finally, Rizzler needs to start learning the four basic commands. Sit, stay, come and drop. They let her know that <coughs> you, guys, you guys are in charge. Yep. Mm -hmm. And she's taking orders from you rather than you guys taking orders from her. 
then Rizla's embarrassing arm humping will be a thing of the past. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Chris. No worries. It's been a pleasure as usual. As, as usual. Two months for the old snip snip. Not a problem. Thank you. See you then. I'm See cutting ya. down the days. Yeah, we yeah. are too. Oh, yeah. You need to get out more. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> After the break, it's all in a day's work for a vet. No, it is just a bird manure. Well, I'm pleased you're doing it, not me. And picking the right toys for your new kitten can be tricky if you haven't done it before. So I'm going to give you a few options your kitten will love. Hi, I'm Natalie Beck. Now, earlier on in the show, Katrina gave you some great hints about taking your kitten home, including the importance of play. But with so many toys on the market, it's sometimes hard to know what to choose. So I'm going to give you a few options your kitten will love. All kittens have a hunting instinct, so most toys are designed to engage those skills. And they love to chase things with unpredictable movements. Toys with feathers are a real hit with the young ones and they'll spend hours playing with things like these. But if you want to rest, why not try a wind-up toy like this little mouse? <laughs> Once your kitten has grasped the idea of moving toys, it's a good idea to add some interest with noise and textures. These toys are filled with plastic and make a crunching sound when they're chewed. Or you can try some different materials, like this fluffy little mouse. Your kitten will soon find their favourite. Now, when your kitten gets a bit older, this will keep them amused for hours. It's a sneaky snacks ball. All you do is fill it with their favourite treats and they'll be drawn in by the smell. And don't forget to change your toys regularly. A good variety will develop mental and physical skills. Plus, your kitten won't get bored. I'm in Alberston, on the northwest coast of Tasmania, and I'm about to make a surprise house call to the Johnson family and their somewhat sickly cockatiel. Must be the right place. Good morning. How are you? You must be Rochelle. Yes. You know who I am? You know why I'm here? To see my bird. How is your bird? All right. All right? Can I come in? Come in. You'll have to get dressed, won't you? So, is this the little bird? Yeah. Hello, little bird. How are you? You still got problems? Yeah. Now, we need the whole family in on this, so I've summoned Mum Carolyn and Dad Noel back from the garage sale. Got a bone and plunger oh, no, in No, I left a, what I really wanted there because I was in a dinner. What did you want? Some ducks. Well, I don't know about ducks, but I'd better get on with looking at Darling, the three-month-old Lutino cockatiel with a crook tummy. He poops and it gets stuck all on his bum feathers and I have to bath him. I wrap him in a towel and every day. Yeah. But I blow dry him because he doesn't know how to fluff up. Did you have a problem right from the word go? Um, Did I? Oh, well, we had to hand rear him because he wasn't cracking seeds. Good. So we yeah. mixed up a brew of egg and... Arrowroot biscuit. Is that what the breeder recommended or the pet shop recommended? <laughs> friend, friend Gina. Friend Gina friend recommended. Friend Gina from work I got him from. Now that would explain why Darling's got the runs. So I'd better get him out and take a good look and a good sniff. I want you to smell this. <laughs> and I want you to tell me what you think it smells like. Uh, a bird? No, no, no. Think about something human that you might smell in your toilet area. And tell me what you think it smells yeah. like. Smell it again. Urine. Exactly. This has a distinct urine smell, mm -hmm. which suggests to me that this bird's kidneys are not functioning as well as they should be. Darling's droppings don't look normal either, but Noel's a bit worried that I'm even touching them. <laughs> Noel, it is just a bird manure. There is nothing really yucky about it, right? Now, Darling's begun to eat seeds, but he's not doing a very good job. So what we've got in here is sunflower, which he's obviously eating a lot of because he's cracked all that open, right? Mm -hmm. He's eating oats, which is this one that he's also cracking open. Yeah, he likes that too. That one there. And he's not eating much of anything else. Nah. Do you give him any source of calcium at all? Does he get any cuttlefish or anything like that? Uh, no. No, he's got shell grit. Yeah. Is that enough? No. Oh, OK. Darling's poor diet has given him a calcium deficiency and internal problems. 
But there's another thing that could be making matters worse. Have you wormed him? No, I didn't know he had to be wormed. I didn't know that it... You got cats? Yeah, yes. You weren't a cat? Done all that. The dog? Yes. Yourselves? Last Mm. night? (laughs) Done everything? Well done. Guess what? Birds need worming too. Drops in the drinking water every three months will do the trick. As for diet, fruit and veggies are essential. But as a youngster, darling should still be on a good quality rearing mix. So I want you to swap from this to this. Okay. In the space of two or three days. And because we've been through a situation where the diet wasn't ideal from the word gap, we're going to add some calcium and we're going to add some multivitamins to help things as well. And to encourage Darling to crack seeds, I've soaked a batch in wet newspaper till it's sprouted. This seed is all now soft. Mm-hmm. Much easier for the bird to eat. A lot of people that take on baby birds have no idea at all mm. what to do. They're not that different from dogs and cats. No. Really, they're not. You've done everything right. It's just that you didn't have the right advice from the word go. But before I go, I really need to do a bit of washing up. That's pretty grotty, isn't it? <laughs> you wouldn't put on a pair of shoes that had that inside them, would you? No. <laughs> right. Okay, Rochelle, you take that, you take your bird. There's only one thing worrying me. These ducks. Mm-hmm. Are they Muscovies, Cayugas, Kaki Campbells? What are they? No, those are ceramic ducks. I want them to sit around on my shelves in the kitchen. For a minute, I think I was having to do with a crappy duck. Okay, Noel, got your keys. I'm off. See you later. Thanks, Dr. Harry. Bye. Yeah.